Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black White Invoke Justice Planeswalker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring 4 copies of Kaya Intangible Slayer. The 7 mana Planeswalker starts out at 6 loyalty and has built in hexproof, so the only way to get rid of Kaya once it's in play is to attack it with creatures or to maybe take it out with an Edict effect. Shieldred's Edict and Invoke Despair are popular options in Standard. And then the plus 2 lets each opponent lose 3 life while we gain 3. The zero ability draws two cards, even though the opponent gets to scry one, and the minus three can exile a creature or enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types, so it can also potentially re-enable an enter the battlefield ability, which can provide a ton of value. So casting Kaya for seven mana can be a bit of a challenge, even though we have a bit of ramp between the Celestus, as well as our Restoration of Igancho, which can put an extra land in play with a second chapter, so those are always to get Kai in play ahead of schedule, but a lot more exciting is to cheat it in play from the graveyard using Invoke Justice, a 5 mana sorcery returning any permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield, in addition to distributing 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of creatures and or vehicles we control, so it can add a lot of power and toughness to the board, as well as bring back one of our expensive planeswalkers like Kaya, but we also have some other options like the Eternal Wanderer, which can potentially act as a sweeper with a minus 4, can make double striking samurai, which also benefits fit from the extra plus one counters, and the plus one can also be quite versatile, exiling an artifact or creature, returning it on the next end step, so it can also potentially get rid of opposing tokens for good, and to re-enable enter the battlefield abilities on some of our creatures. And then we also have Vraska, Betrayal's Sting, which we can cast at 5 mana if we pay 2 life, or 6 mana if we cast it for double black. And then it can come into play using the zero ability to proliferate, in addition to drawing a card at the cost of 1 life. So by proliferating we add extra loyalty to all our planeswalkers, but we also get to add more plus 1 counters to some of our creatures, so has great synergy with Invoke Justice as well. And then a minus 2 can exile opposing creatures, turning them into treasure tokens essentially. And the minus 9 ultimate can also come up. Maybe we we proliferate with the zero ability a bunch, then use the minus nine to apply nine poison to the opponent, and then invoke justice, bring back our own Vraska, and then the proliferate once again can finish the opponent off by applying the tenth poison counter, so that can certainly happen as well. And then we also have three copies of the Wandering Emperor, which has great synergy with Vraska, with the proliferate and the extra plus one counters, but the minus two also provides a bit of removal, exiling a tapped creature gaining two life, and we can provide a bigger board presence by making Samurai, on which we can then place our plus one counters from Invoke Justice. So those are the types of cards we want to bring back with Invoke, and to help us discard it, not only do we have the second chapter of Restoration of Igancho, but we also have four copies of Rafine's Informant, so we can connive, meaning we draw and discard, if we discard a non-land, we get a plus one counter, so once again great synergy with the proliferate. So we have eight early enablers to set up our Invoke Justice. And then we've got some cheap spot removal as well, with two copies of Laydown Arms to exile a creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes we control. Its controller also gains three life, but as kind of a control deck we don't really mind. And we've got plenty of basic planes to enable our Laydown Arms, as well as a Rafine's Tower, fetch lands to fetch our planes as well, and of course we do need quadruple white for invoke justice, so we will naturally have a lot of planes, as well as a restoration, which can fetch a planes with the first chapter, and two copies of ambitious farmhand, which will also find a planes when it enters a battlefield, and then with coven can potentially transform into a 3-3 lifelinker, so plenty of ways to enable our laydown arms. And then we also have two copies of Ossification to diversify our removal a bit, as this can not only exile an opposing creature when it enters after enchanting a basic land, so another reason to like a lot of basics in the deck, but it can also exile an opposing Planeswalker, which we can otherwise struggle to deal with. And then at 3 mana, besides Restoration, which provides a ton of value by helping us ramp, maybe get back a fetch land from the graveyard as well. Let's say we want to discard a Kaya, then we may not have a cheap creature in the graveyard or a land to bring back, but if we had a fetch land as one of our early land drops, then at least there will be a storefront in the graveyard to get back with Restoration, gain an extra point of life, and fetch up another basic. So those have great synergy with Restoration as well. And then by fetching a bunch of times with our storefront, we'll slowly thin out the deck of our basics, so we're more likely to draw our relevant spells. 
And then eventually the Architect can also be a solid win condition as a 3-4 with Vigilance that makes additional 1-1 one -one tokens. We've got a full set of Wedding Announcements, a great in the grindier matchups by making an army of 1-1 one -one tokens that we will eventually pump up with our Wedding Festivity, maybe drawing a few cards in the process. And then two copies of the Celestus, which is another discard outlet as it switches between day and night, gaining a bit of life in the process, so it gives us even more card selection. And then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Depopulate, which can come in handy against some more aggressive decks in the format. It's kind of a catch-up mechanism, since our deck is kind of slow to get on the board, Restoration doesn't have an immediate impact, so sometimes we do need that reset button as well. And then Invoke Justice and all our lovely Planeswalkers to win the late game. The mana base, as we said, has four copies of the Storefront as a fetch land to get either Planes or Swamp. Don't want more than one Swamp, otherwise we risk not being able to cast or Invoke Justice on curve, but one Swamp is definitely useful to have. And then a nine planes, an Iganjo, which can also be channeled for interaction, so we're not playing the Abandoned Mire in black, even though that would have decent synergy in our deck as well. Caves and Shattered Sanctum as black-white dual lands, despite not having the planes type for laydown arms. And then Rafine's Tower does have the planes subtype and can also be cycled for three mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Informants and Restoration, both discard outlets for Kaya in case we find our Invoke Justice. And then maybe hang on to Aganjo as interaction. Turn on Phoenix Chick, we can exile with Laydown Arms. Although playing Informant is also fine here, can maybe block a Haste creature. And yeah, I think we discard Kaya. Swiss Spear I'm happy to block if I get the chance, but it looks like play with fire is going to take care of the informant. So now lay down arms on Swiss Spear might be the play. There is Invoke Justice. So yeah, interesting spot. Could also pass with Iganjo available. And then next turn, Restoration plus lay down arms to have a more efficient turn. Kind of like that idea. Warfare, yep. And then exiling Phoenix Chick is also better long term. Now I could also play Farmhand, since we'll be able to put counters onto it with Invoke Justice instead of going for Restoration. That seems slightly better. Okay. So Kaya is coming up and against Moderate. That should be quite effective. Epicure deals 2 damage here thanks to the Warfare. And another Phoenix Chick. Glad we exiled the previous one since they might be able to get it back otherwise. Okay, we're at 8. Not sure if Kaya needs to exile a Phoenix Chick or just start using the plus 2 ability. And then our point still hits us for 4 every turn, but we get to gain 3, so they might start attacking Kaya. Could also mine us on the Mechanized Warfare, which may be better. Sure. First you, then your ghost. And then keep Farmhand back for a turn. And then they can't target Kaya with burn spells, so it's gonna have to be combat damage. And hope they don't have End of Festivities, which could let them take out Kaya here. Alright, they had it. It's too bad. Opponent is down to one card at least, and we may be able to hard cast another Kaya soon. This can grab a Swamp, so we don't have to take damage of Caves. So it's still definitely winnable. Don't think it's worth 5 damage over taking one from Epicure. Felden. Yeah, that one kind of hurts to block here since the opponent would get to look at 5 cards. So I could take 4 down to 4. Next turn play Kaya. Gain 3. And then maybe block Felden. Sure. Another Kaya, alright. So the next couple plays are taken care of. 
could also actually discard Kaya to get back either Storefront or Informant. Storefront would gain one life, which is pretty nice. Um, Informant would be tapped, so it doesn't get to block Felden right away. Yeah, interestingly, I think we do discard Kaya. And then get back Storefront for the extra life gain. Upside of getting back Informant is that we can maybe get closer to Coven for Farmhand. And then a huge lifelinker will certainly put us out of reach. But another Kaya seems quite effective too here. Just gonna plus two. Sounds easy enough. Play with fire has to go upstairs. So we're back up to six. Pass. Squee. That's a powerful top deck. Should still survive, can block Squee. And then next turn our opponent will be able to get back Squee. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. We're at one. Late on arms. That's a good draw. So now Kaya can minus on Felden, and then we have Coven enabled for Farmhand. And we can gain a ton of life back. That seems better than just using the plus two. Okay, get in for 7. Felden, I guess, can block, so might as well attack. And then at 8 life, we've got a blocker for Squee. Might as well lay down arms, a Phoenix check. And Kumano is not gonna do it. Awesome, so incredibly close game against Monorant, all the way down to one life. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems decent. Just missing Kaya to discard. I'll grab probably a plane still. But later with restoration, if we get back storefront, I could see getting a swamp. Turn on Delver, so mono blue with Delver. And uh Informant versus Farmhand. Probably prefer Informant, which can maybe pick up a counter here. Okay, found Kaya, so we'll put that in the graveyard. So now if Invoke Justice resolves, we have a Kaya, which would be lovely. Although resolving it is going to be a challenge. But at least we've got some good pressure here with a 2 mana 3-2. This likely gets countered, but then we're clearing a path for Invoke Justice to resolve. Delver is still a 1-1, one, one, but it's not going to take long to turn into a 3-2 flyer. And a Ledger Shredder. Okay. Another Kaya we can maybe try and hard cast. So for now, Informant attacks. Plan to play Farmhand and Storefront. Opponent seems to have a one mana interactive spell in hand. Storefront could get a swamp, although it does mean having to take a damage of Caves of Coilos if we want to cast Invoke Justice next turn. So I think I still get a Plains. Delver is still a creature. So their hands must have quite a few lands and creatures in it as well. Opponents. Now tapping out for Haughty Jin. So chances of Invoke Justice resolving aren't great. Opponent could have another Make Disappear to counter, which would kind of ruin our day. So it is possible I can just go for a Celestis and then next turn try Invoke Justice. Although we're getting close to just hard casting a Kaya as well. So I think I should still go for it here. And possible they just have a protection spell for Haughty Jin instead of a counter spell for Invoke Justice. Which is the hope. Alright, given that Kaya resolves here. 
I don't think we should attempt to minus on Hardy Jin, since they likely have something to protect it. So instead I can start draining with a plus two ability, so they are less likely to take out our Planeswalker. And then our creatures can attack. So let me attack first, see if there's a response from our opponent. Opponent takes it, so yeah, now it's six. Kaya's plus two is going to be lethal next turn already. So our game plan worked out beautifully this game. Our opponent did indeed have a slip out the back, so minus three would not have worked. But uh, yeah, now they could technically kill Kaya, but then they still die to our creatures. So our opponent needs to find quite a few cheap answers. And then they still need a counter spell for Kaya number two. So not impossible, but it's going to be challenging. Having Hadi Jin to discount their spells, of course, a big help. As your opponent decides what to discard to Thirst for Discovery. Discards an island. Another Thirst. So... Opponent can leave a couple blockers back for our creatures, but then they won't have enough power to kill Kaya necessarily. Maybe if Thirst discards two instants or sorceries, Hardy Jin can get up to eight by himself. But nope, still only seven power. And they need to kill Kaya. So Kaya down. Okay, let's see if our opponent has more interaction in hand. Eternal Wanderer, also quite powerful. So we can play Wanderer and then plus one on the Aberration. And if that works, they should be dead, so unless there's a Blue March involved. But our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand is pretty decent. Celestus can maybe transform to discard Kaya, and then Invoke Justice can bring it back. So I'll still get a Plains. Turn one Swamp. Blue-black, so it could be Control. Looks like Proliferate. Right, play Celestus. Good chance your opponent passes without playing anything, switches to Knight, and then we can discard Kaya. And if not, passing the turn with Wandering Emperor available, we'll switch it to Knight Time as well. And then we'll maybe have a token in play to put those counters from Invoke Justice onto. So we could already go for Invoke Justice, but I prefer flashing an Emperor maybe during the opponent's turn. To play around a counter spell here. And then maybe we'll have them tap out to counter Emperor, and then the coast is clear for Invoke Justice to get a Kaya in play. Now, Black will have some Edict effects potentially, Shieldred's Edict, a way to get around the Hexproof from Kaya. So that's still a concern. Hybrid attacks. Try and exile it here. Okay. Now by exiling, if we want to make a Samurai to put the counters from Invoke Justice onto, we'll lose the Emperor, so we might take a different approach, but... Okay, opponent's got the Edict right now to get rid of Emperor, that works out. Hybrid exiled. And Venser the play. Okay. Another Kaya. Probably fine to keep Summon Hand to Hardcast, although... Probably don't need two of them. And then Invoke Justice, bring back Kaya, even though we don't get any plus one counters here. Still allows us to exile Venser before it makes any more tokens. And then if we find our own Vraska, we could also proliferate to make a 3-3. So we'll see if they have another Edict at the ready. If not, Kaya can pull us ahead pretty quickly. Inquiry, draw two, get a poison, so we're up to three. We will have to try and close out the game pretty quickly, since the clock is ticking here on the poison counters. 
So step one, probably draw with Kaya. Try and find more planeswalkers to keep up the pressure, and then we can start draining the opponent for three. Let okay. me get a read on the situation. So we can run out some smaller creatures. Opponent might have a two mana counter spell up as well with three poison, it would be a hard counter. So step one farmhand. Depopulate we can easily discard with informants since we're not gonna need it. Opponent with an augury in response, up to four poison. And a wedding announcement is nice too, but I'll just play another informant here. Not sure if the opponent's playing any board wipes, but we're about to find out. Another inquiry. Do five poison. Okay, so I think it's time to start draining now. And then I have to decide between announcement and emperor. Opponent likely still has a two mana counter up here. So I'm less into main phasing announcement and having it countered. Although they may even let this one resolve. But let's just flash an emperor. And this is a two-turn clock on the board. Alright, opponent tries to anoint an informant. So we could flash an emperor. If I add a counter to, let's say, Venser, I would have Coven enabled, but don't have the mana to transform farmhand right now. So, in that case, maybe play announcement to draw. Not that we need more card draw, prefer the extra pressure. So maybe Emperor make a Samurai is fine here, as opposed to getting a plus one counter. So opponent needs to apply 5 poison or find a couple removal spells. Another augury up to 6 poison. But next turn we can just plus 2 Kaya, play another one, plus 2 again. And just need one more damage. Hybrids can also be exiled in a multitude of ways. Don't want to lay down arms and gain the opponent some life, so ossification might be the move. Which they might counter. And then we still have Coven on the farm hand. So I guess we'll transform and then we can still plus Emperor on the 1-1. One -one. Attack all out, and then plus Kaya for the win. Could have also exiled the hybrid. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems functional. Restoration as a discard outlet in case we top deck an expensive planeswalker facing red aggro. Currently missing a planes for laydown arms, but now a storefront can fetch one up. Still won't be able to exile a 2-drop, but uh, the red deck has a lot of 1-mana creatures it could play. It's going to be an adversary instead. So now we desperately want to draw another planes. Ossification works too. And we have the basic now to enchant. Okay, next turn probably go for restoration unless we want to exile the etching here. But depopulate sets that up nicely. Stormseeker, opponent keeps up the pressure. So we're at 12. I do have double planes now, but still can't exile Stormseeker. So at that point, maybe just restoration and then next turn depopulate. Could also hang on to Iganjo, but then it switches to Knight. And we'll have to face the plus 2 plus 0 from Slasher, which seems like a bad idea. So hopefully this incentivizes our opponent to play another creature to give haste. 
We will fall pretty low, so we could be dead to a few more burn spells afterwards. But possible that the populate will uh, still set the opponent back enough where we can stabilize. We're at four. Also have the option of using Laid on Arms on my own creature to gain three in a pinch. And we can get back Storefront to gain more life. So discard planes. Get Storefronts. Which at this point... Do we want planes or Swamp? I think still planes. So we don't have to take damage when we cast Invoke Justice. And depopulate and hope for the best. Next turn we will get our 3-4 Architect. Can keep up by Gancho, perhaps. Laid on arms if needed. Or we could just be dead to a Lightning Strike. Okay, we get to untap. Our restoration is in play. So, now... What's the move? Invoke Justice, get back, Storefront puts us to 4, so we're not dead to a Lightning Strike anymore. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. And then Frasca next turn can also start proliferating, but that's also going to cost us some life, so it's not without risk. And now we'll get a Swamp. And at least a 7-8 is going to be difficult for the red deck to remove, and also closes out the game pretty quickly. And then we can maybe lay on arms a token. Okay, play with fire down to two. Going on bottoms, that's promising. I don't think I should lay on arms my own architect here, but could maybe keep me alive for an extra turn. Okay, Wandering Emperor, also great here. So, definitely attack, and then I think lay on arms our own token. And then we can flash an Emperor at instant speed. Could have switched it back to daytime by flashing an Emperor in my own turn. Kumano puts this to four. Make a Samurai. Still hesitant to... Lose one life with Vraska out. So... Sadly cannot minus two Emperor on my own creature to gain two life since they're all vigilant. So what's the best I can do? I guess play Informant, see what we draw. Maybe find another Invoke Justice to just win the game right now. Okay, so... Let's say we're crazy and we do add a counter to Samurai and then proliferate with Vraska down to three, putting me dead to a Lightning Strike. But would we be presenting lethal as a question? I would have 10, 11, 12, so still not quite lethal, so I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I don't think we're just gonna play Vraska at all this game. So we'll discard, cycle Rafine's Tower in case I find another Laydown Arms, which we did, awesome. So now I can plus on the Samurai attack, and laid on arms another token to gain three. Okay. And we should be out of range now. GG's. At seven life, I can't imagine two cards that save the opponents. Felden can attack and go digging. So incredibly close game against Monorats, and yeah, Laid on Arms is quite flexible in that regard, so good synergy with our own Architect. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect, with both our lands coming into play tapped. But uh, we've got a lot of cheap spot removal, so we should be okay against Aggro. And then we can slowly build our way up towards Kaya. Farmhand will help hit a basic for ossification as well. Facing what could be mono blue. 
So it's not going to be the easiest matchup for us, but at least our removal spells here can deal with whatever the opponent presents. Would love to land an early wedding announcement, for instance, to provide some card advantage. Opponent got the impulse, so they get to sculpt their hand. And hopefully they don't find a lot of uh, card draw effects to pull ahead. Just get another planes here. At least we haven't missed any land drops so far. Opponent not doing anything end of turn means they probably have a lot of counter spells in hand. And there's Haughty Jin number one. And I kind of like going for laydown arms now, since we have Emperor as another play we can make alongside it to be mana efficient. So they would need something like a negate here. Fading hope to bounce it, fair enough. So I could just play Emperor now, since we have double ossification to try and clear the Haughty Jin to start applying a bit of pressure, as opposed to keeping Emperor to maybe minus two on Haughty Jin once it attacks. That's gonna take a long time to set up. So, the hope is that they just tap out for Haughty Jin again. We can also vacation, even if they counter one of them. We have a second. Okay, Invoke Justice could be nice too. So, step one, ossification. Opponent has the negate, perfect. Get that out of there. And another ossification. Exile Haughty Jin. We'll just make another Samurai hit for three. And next turn I also have the option of maybe putting a counter on a Samurai and then transforming the Farmhand into a 3-3. Three, three. With a land we could try and resolve Kaya, although the chances of it working out are pretty slim. Celestus is a draw. So, if Celestus resolves... Or if it doesn't, we still get to transform Farmhand. So... I guess I could start by plussing Wandering Emperor on a token. See if there's a response. Okay, so now Farmhand can transform with Coven enabled. Pwn on negates. Okay, happy to get another negate out of their hand. And then we'll hang back. Now they might still have some conditional counter spells in hand, so unless we pay two mana. So they could still have those. But uh, if they counter Kaya without exiling it, then Invoke Justice could work out. And our opponent might actually counter Depopulate 2 here, so we can maybe try if that works. Opponent Fading Hope on Haughty Jin. Depopulate resolves. And then I think I'm making another Samurai. We must Opponent replays Haughty Jin again. Two cards left in hand and another Wandering Emperor. So I would prefer to try and cast Kaya, have it countered, and then invoke Justice it back. We could minus Emperor set up another one, which may work out. Let your blade do the talking. And then invoke Justice could also get back Emperor if we don't draw land for Kaya next turn, assuming they counter Emperor here. Opponent hangs back. So I'll flash in another one. Opponent lets it go. 
Okay, wedding announcement's nice. So, once again, have quite a few options. But, uh, yeah, going for wedding announcements is kind of a must counter. And we're just gonna start going wide. Opponent can now finish off Emperor, but then they will take a lot of damage on the way back. See you later. And then now Hodijin is tapped, so Invoke Justice could get back Emperor to exile it. Although, still expect them to have at least something like a Make Disappear in hand. Okay, so if we go for Restoration, we won't have the mana for Invoke Justice. But I think that's okay. Hardy Jin will probably kill us in two attacks. But we might kill the opponents on the way back as well. Flow of Knowledge and Response, alright, that's a good one. So opponent goes digging, drawing a ton of cards. But they're unlikely to be able to counter Restoration. Unless they found another Negate. Okay, that's the third one. Attack with all. Draw with Wedding Announcement, end of turn. And then we'll wait and see. Putin can potentially counter our next play as well, but at 5 life. They'll need some blockers or interaction. Another flow. Well, they're not uh, lacking card advantage here. Question is, can they produce enough blockers? They've already cast two Fading Hope. So they might have a couple of those left. Probably a one mana Tolarian Terror. So it's going to be close. And if we can force them to tap out all the way, then we can sneak in Invoke Justice. So we're at 7. And our opponent's just gonna discard down and keeps up 3 islands. So I could try and invoke justice, which would require another negate since we can pay for make disappear unless they sacrifice Jin. So that seems worth a shot, as opposed to Kaya, which they can spell pierce or make disappear more easily. Then I should try this now. Go for Wandering Emperor. And let's see if they have the fourth negate instead. Also possible to have the blue march to just phase out a bunch of our creatures. So pay for make disappear. They probably have another one. And then a single fading hope is not gonna do it, so it would have to be a blue march to phase out our creatures. So that might still get them there. And yeah, seems to be the case here. Points targeting all our creatures. And a March of Swirling Mist, yeah. Down to two cards in hand, but that doesn't matter when they can kill us with a Hadi Jin. So yeah, they needed a pretty specific sequence of plays. But uh, Flow of Knowledge plus Blue March is a good combination. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not ideal. Don't even have a basic for ossification. A land's both tapped, so it's pretty awkward. This is definitely better. And then, given that we're on the play, and we don't have any planes, probably get rid of Laydown Arms. Turn to Informant, discard Kaya, turn three Wedding Announcements, hopefully find Invoke Justice along the way. So Lustus can also help with that. Opponent on a black strategy here. So they could also have some Graveyard Hate in the form of Graveyard Trespasser. For now, takes out our Informant, that's fine. And yeah, not in a hurry to play Celestus since we're not ramping into a 5-drop, so we'll get the announcement going. Which can provide a lot of value in these grindy matchups. And then next turn we can double spell Celestus and Farmhand. Mirex points towards 
either a token deck or maybe a poison deck, but token seems more likely. And there's Invoke Justice, perfect. So Celestus into Farmhand, sets up our Invoke Justice beautifully. So I'm also not in a hurry to trade for the opponent's token, since we'll be able to place counters on them next turn. So hoping for a juicy target for Kaya's minus ability, Shielded would be great, as we'll be able to exile it here. It's going to be Duress. Oh no. The one card that can stop us from getting back Kaya, that's unlucky. Not a card you see very often in Best of One, at least. But uh, I guess that works. The old Thoughtseize curse, as it's known. Take away your card and draw another one. So one each, and then maybe one more on a token, since farmhand's more valuable. Could also go three, one and zero. So we have Coven enabled for what it's worth. Kaya probably wants to draw since we're on empty. And then hope they don't have a Shieldred's Edict or Invoke Despair, although pretty far from having Quadruple Black for Invoke Despair here. Okay, and then Vraska can also add more counters to the team. Do I want to attack is a question. Don't want them pressuring Kaya, but at the same time we're dealing quite a bit of damage. So I think 4-4 can attack. And then end of turn we'll get another token and give the team plus one plus one. If they channel Iganjo, that's fine by me. Go for the throat farmhand of all creatures. Maybe they're hoping to still pressure Kaya. It's gonna be challenging past two more tokens. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow, with no early interaction, but the Depopulate can catch us back up, and then Restoration discarding Vraska can maybe bring it back with Invoke Justice. At least, that's the hope. Put on to red-black, turn to Harvester. Okay. It is multicolor, so they would draw off Depopulate, so it's not our favorite creature to see. But I think we're just gonna go for a restoration here. And then maybe Vraska can take care of the Harvester. Luckily dodged an early Fable from the opponents. Opponent discards Springs to the Blood Token. And another Harvester. Okay, they do deal quite a bit of damage here. Although now Wandering Emperor is an option too. Yeah, I think discard Vraska makes sense. And then... I think just play a land pass with Emperor available as opposed to depopulating and letting the opponent draw. And then we can try and exile the Harvester, gain some life back, and then next turn invoke Justice. Could also add more counters to maybe a Samurai token we make or the Architect. reason to depopulate is that it could be awkward later once we get our own creatures in play. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. Now they could have the mana for an Invoke Despair, which would be quite effective here. It's gonna be another Harvester. Bones down to one Blood Token, so can only give minus two, minus two. Don't expect my Architect to survive for long. Could put a plus one counter on Architect. But our opponent would wait until end of turn to destroy it before I know whether or not I want to depopulate. Could of course go for a Wedding Announcement and Ossification. Even though that removes my only answer to an opposing Planeswalker. And then... Next turn Invoke Justice. Could also just make another Samurai with a Wandering Emperor, which may be better, honestly. Because yeah, I want this Invoke Justice to provide me a bit more value 
And right now it's unlikely to be the case, even though we get back Vraska. I prefer kind of clearing the board a bit first. So end of turn, expect him to take out Architect, but we'll see. Yep, go for the throat, takes that out. Still get a 1-1 one, one end of turn. If our opponent attacks with Harvester, not sure if I want to trade, but our opponent doesn't offer. Okay, so now Invoke Justice, get back Vraska. Looks a lot better. Can put two counters on each token. Or maybe even one and three, since we'll get to proliferate anyway here. Metal is Don't think I'm proliferating onto the announcement itself, but everything else is fine. And then we'll get a swamp now. And our samurai can attack. And then I could leave the 5-5 back, even though we'll get another 1-1 one -one end of turn, just play it safe, protect our Vraska. Opponent chumps, so there might be a sweeper incoming, burn down the house, could deal 5 to everything. But no, our opponent concedes. Alright, so we got to see our black-white invoke justice planeswalkers in action, and whenever you get to cast the namesake card and bring back an expensive planeswalker ahead of schedule, the deck feels very powerful indeed. But right now I think the problem is that Kaya isn't super well positioned in the meta, even though draining the opponent for 3 against red burn decks is very useful, the minus ability to exile a creature could be better, since the biggest creature you can hope to exile right now in the best of one meta is maybe a shield root, so you can start draining the opponent every turn, but there's not a ton of Atraxa being played or Titan of Industry, these huge creatures with nice entered battlefield abilities that you can then exile and then re-enable their entered battlefield ability to your benefit, so the those are the types of creatures we would like to see more of before this deck can really take off. Otherwise it remains a fun option, but not the most competitive deck out there. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.